Good evening and welcome to Simpson at 8. I'm Livia Morvono sitting in for Stanley Simpson. They say food is medicine and in the Pacific this is particularly true. Isn't it important then that we prioritize food which has kept us a strong people for generations? Our guests tonight are Dr. Johnny Hawea and Robert Oliver from the Pacific Island Food Revolution. But first, have a look at this. This is before we are going to do the final announcement. If I could just share a few words with you before we move on. I teamed up with Robert uh, several years ago because of the crisis that we are facing at the Ministry of Health. I felt that we are at the bottom of a cliff and we are at the receiving end of a lot of these unhealthy habits. Uh, we did a small study and we we found out that we were amputating uh, one in every 12 hours, uh, diabetics. And that was diabetes alone. And we we're talking about cancer and heart attacks and all the NCDs that are coming. We know we are competing against, you know, processed uh, foods and good marketing and a lot of money poured into that. One thing I shared with Robert was, if I go into the village today, an old lady serves me fresh fish and roro and tavioca, they will apologize to me for serving me that food. And he didn't believe me. I said, well, we can go today <clears throat> to any village in Fiji. That was the positioning of our food, the way I saw it, and I didn't like it. And I told him we have to change that. You know, we have to change that because it means a lot. We shouldn't be looking down at our food. That's why I'm part of this revolution. I'm emotional about it and I'm, I'm happy that I'm emotional about it because I know I'm representing a lot of people who are actually facing more hardship and struggles because of that. And your, your participation means the world. You standing up and coming to this show. It's a competition, yes, it is. But it's much more than that. We are trying to elevate ourselves, our culture, what we are good at, superfoods. This changes a lot in the plot platform of health for our country. And I do not know what, what's going to happen next after this and go to the finals. But I want you to know that your participation is going to inspire a lot of people in Fiji, in the Pacific, those of us who are overseas. And I want you to know that. Don't take it lightly. And if you come out of here and you don't make it to the finals, know that you have contributed immensely to the health of this nation just by taking part. I wanted to share that with you because I feel it's the voice of those people that are lying in our hospitals, struggling with lack of resources. And you know very well the struggles, because you come from that, you represent that too. And irrespective of what happens today, I hope, I hope that you will take that with you. Thank you. Dr. Chani, welcome. That was a powerful video. Yes. I'm still uh, trying to recover from it myself. Mm. What were you doing? What were um, you trying to say to these people? Well, um, I, I, I am trying to portray uh, the stance that that old lady in the village um, uh, is coming from. And uh, for most of us, we have sort of blamed NCD on people's own choices. Mm. Um, 
But you're I'm, saying there is more happening. There is more to it. Yeah. Um, We're apologizing our, for our, our own food, food choices and what the lady was apologizing for has been influenced by a few factors, uh, powerful factors, and one of it is history. Uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that our history has been influenced by our being colonized and uh, British, Western, um, and that has influenced our food choices. Mm. Has it also influenced the way we feel about our food? I mean, take me back About the way to we your... feel about our food, about the way we think about our food, about the way we value our mm. food. Take and me back to your interaction with that woman. Yes. What, how was it? Just, just take us through that moment again. What did she say yeah. to you? I, I came there as, as a government doctor, um, bringing in medicine, health care. And uh, I probably represent a younger generation population coming from an urban setup mm. and educated. Mm. And so in that moment, I felt that retrospectively also, I felt that the woman starts to elevate you a little bit, elevate me and push herself down. Mm. And in, and in the consequence, the food that she was serving you? Yes. Her whole surrounding, her culture, her history, herself, and what she represents begin to go down. Mm -hmm. And it's represented by that plate of food. And so, so I'm what was sorry, the food? doctor. So she said, I'm sorry, as yes. she served you what? Roro, -ro, cassava, fresh fish, you know, mm. lemon, chili. This is super food. Yes. And they have to apologize. And mind you, this is, this is not a one-off case. Mm. This is my experience almost all the time. And has that been your experience as well, Robert, as you're well, traveling around the country? Absolutely, around the region. And I, I want to give col the col colonization concept some context. Colonization is not just land or political thinking. It, goes to the soil and to the seed and to the palate. Mm -hmm. It's a general system of suppression. And I, I don't want us to get stuck in colonization because yes. we can't move on yes. otherwise. Yeah. Yes. Unless it was my people that did it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I just want to acknowledge that it happened. And I think what happened was the tourism industry came in right after that. Mm -hmm. And here was this whole industry positioned not with local food but with international foreign food mm. and so the message continued with, with people coming in with reinforcing their reinforcing our reinforcing yeah. that message and listen i grew up in fiji and we have a mindset that everything from overseas is better we, that's right I and mean, i remember fantasizing about everywhere else the whole time mm. I was the whole time you grew up here yeah mm. yeah and so you can see how these things collide mm. and you don't really think about the impact that'll have on food though no you don't you don't but it's because there you it's, think it's something that's happening by default of how things are mm. i mean Another e big influence is the development uh, phases, the stages that our country came through, how food became a commodity. Uh, once food became a commodity, it changed. Mm -hmm. It influenced people's choices mm -hmm. because then now strong marketing comes in. You know, the fast food that's associated with our development uh, phases, the urban, the rural to urban drift, that changed everything. So when the woman is apologizing, it's not that she chooses mm. to apologize. This apology is coming from a devaluation mm. of a culture, a people, an identity. And, and as a consequence, it's food. It's food. And, and the story of the food is the story of the people. Yes. That's right. That plate of food represents yeah. far more than what you eat. Yes. Mm. It's a, I've it's heard you say that before yeah, in yeah. your previous work with I, I say it because people understand food. it when mm. I say it. And, and the, the opportunity sits in that as well, you know, mm. I mean, the Pacific Island Food Revolution idea came about because we're like, but that food is beautiful mm. and it represents a solution, a Pacific solution. To mm. our current health problems. And yeah. to maybe the, the, this food should be on the tourism menus, the yeah. local farmers should be. So maybe our economic challenges so as well. So it goes into prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so it mm. all, food sits across all these different sectors mm. and if we elevate our food and thus mm. ourselves, 
Yeah. Everything gets lifted with it. Wow. Yeah. And it made you emotional. Yeah. Did the, 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 the participants of the, of, of the next season, Pacific Island Food Revolution, to whom you were speaking in that video, yes. yeah. did, they, did they get that message? Did they feel the emotions you feel about the value that we ought to be placing on food, you think? I felt they identified with it mm. from the start uh, because yeah, the NCD state uh, in our country is such that everyone has somebody a friend, a family, who is affected, who is disabled, who has died. And so it's everybody's story. And once I mentioned it, I, I felt that they, they, they were with me. So you time. want women like the one that you met to stop apologizing for their food, for food that yes. is authentic I and don't well, traditional? I don't feel like they have to. Yes. Hmm. We yeah. want to remove that yeah. psychology. Yeah. And this is why we're working with television, because it it communicates a sense of glamour and authority mm. Mm. and mm. and this food deserves that it deserves yeah. to be in the master chef format and yeah. i mean we're, we're doing a bit of trickery because we're taking a reality tv yes. conversation yeah. but we're actually putting all actually, this yeah. stuff into that you're yeah. actually starting revolutions and and not just in in the economy or in the nation yeah. but with with, yeah. with health and yes. with the in mind the yes. Whew, yeah. yes. very exciting work yeah. we'll have to talk more about that in the next segment you're watching Simpson at 8, and we're talking to Dr. Chani Hawea and Robert Oliver of the Pacific Island Food Revolution, who are coming out with Season 2 very soon. Don't go away. Welcome back. So we're talking to the wonderful people at Pacific Island Food Revolution, which, by the way, screens Thursday nights, and that's right after this show is done. But let's talk about season two, which will soon air on this network as well. Robert, welcome back. Thank you. You and I have been talking about the Pacific Island Revolution for a while now, both mm -hmm. on camera and off. So let's talk about what's new. What can we expect in this new season? When we last mm -hmm. spoke, you were about to advertise for auditions. What's happened since? Well, we, had, we got fantastic contestants, first of all. I think because the, most people who auditioned had seen season one, and so they, they felt the, the excitement of it and, and the potential to represent their communities through mm -hmm. it. So they came with that mindset. So we, we, had, we got fantastic people in this year. I think for us as mm. judges, I mean, judges is a horrible word, right? Us yes. as hosts, mm. um, uh, Vitasi in Vanuatu, Dr. Johnny here in Fiji, um, Dora Rossi in Samoa, and uh, Fololani Kerr in Tonga, we be have begun to refine our language a bit more. Like, it is about food, but it's also about love mm. and, and celebration. I mean, we don't need to talk about health as long as we get these, this fantastic feeling communicated. Yes, mm. yes. And the contestants do that. Mm. So what we do is layer the insights and the, I guess from our different perspectives, the enthusiasm that we feel mm. about what the contestants are doing. My whole desire with this project from the beginning and my whole ambition was that this is a Pacific problem, the health, is, health yeah. problem is a Pacific mm. problem, but there's also a Pacific solution. Mm. We don't have to do it. These young people in the yeah. Pacific are doing it for us. And that's yeah. what I've been curious about. I mean, you have such noble ambitions. You, you, have, you have a great change that you want to basically effect. But the people who are coming to audition, they, they just know that they're appearing on TV and, and they're doing something they love, they're cooking. How do you find those people who will, in effect, be the agents of the change you want to do? They see? just show up, man. Wow. They're everywhere. Yeah. So you're magic, basically, and you're attracting, you're attracting no, magic. I, I believe they sit in all of our communities, mm -hmm. and, they, and we're just giving them a voice and a platform. So this, this whole... Pacific Island Food Revolution project is, is just a platform for mm. that voice. So you think there, there are lots of people in the communities who still love Pacific food, who oh, still appreciate the, 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 the taste and the, and the nat nature in, in Fijian food? I think, what's yeah. stopping people? What, what's making us apologize for our food or, or not be so proud until... I, I think it, it, it was a matter of what is available for me to express. Mm. Uh, I, I want to be proud of of what I normally do. I, a lot of people, we, we are finding out that a lot of people are still 
carrying on their cultural uh, recipes, mm. their cultural uh, cuisine. But there hasn't been uh, a glamorous platform for them to feel so proud to present mm. it to everybody. So it's really globally. about empowering your food needs and your food yes. habits and your yes. food preferences. Yes. Mm. yes. And, so and we are TV not is just a perfect platform to do we that. We are not telling them, don't apologize. No, no. We no. are just telling them, present. Mm. Yeah. I Don't think, we are yeah. coming away how you, from how you make them confident? How, how what's the set like, and, and what is the setup like so that they're confident to just express? Man, we the whole environment is conducive for that. I mean, mm. we we begin this with this um, kind and loving yeah. and fun approach. We're not yeah. we're not there to talk about health. We're talk we're there to celebrate Pacific food. Mm. Yeah. That environment already is great and, and dynamic. So you have a festive uh, atmosphere going on yeah. when you're And everybody yeah. is Pacific. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they come in and they feel at home all yeah, the time. Yeah. But then also yeah. your choice of host has something to do with the nuances and the slang and the Pacific yeah. flavor yeah. that's going on, yeah. isn't yeah. it? So tell me about, about maybe some of the new hosts that you've got on this season, this coming season. We, do, we have the same hosts, actually. Okay. Um, in season one, in the Kings of Tonga, Her Royal Highness Princess Pearl Levu hosted. Um, for season two, Follow Lenny Kerr, who was in the finals representing Tonga, now hosts the Tonga episodes. So yeah. she's brought another flavour in. Mm. And she's kind of naughty. The, the Pacific <laughs> humour and then yes. the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's brought she's in a Tonga naughty. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it's specifically Tonga. It might <laughs> just be, you it know, completely Pacific, yes. But she's brought a, um, a fun element yes. to mm. it. I mean, we had that already, but she's. Mm. Taking it up another up. level. Uh, she's married to the New Zealand High Commissioner of Fiji, and she's mm -hmm. she's just brought a ter terrific another level of spirit mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. But Her Royal Highness does still appear in season two, okay. mm -hmm. um, and I guess we all have come to know each other more. Yeah. Yeah. And as you work with people, you 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 come to form this oneness. Yeah. And I know that one thing I love about the project is when we're not filming and we're all together doing the finals in Fiji, mm -hmm. and we're all together. And we have these conversations that I don't have anywhere else in the world. Wow. So it's, I look forward to mm. the hardest part of the project is filming the finals. The hours the longest, the tension's the highest, it's full on. But it's the part that nourishes me. Yes. Mm. Because I get to be with these guys. Mm. Mm. Well, let's talk about you a little bit. I mean, you, you, you're basically Fijian. I'm a New Zealander. You're a Kiwi, but, but you grew, grew up, up here. I grew up here, yeah. 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 And so your, your love for food was fueled by, by your time here? Absolutely. I mean, it's in my DNA. I mean, I, I, if I, you know, when you, when you don't feel great, you want to mm. go to that dish that yes. makes you feel reassured. Those yes. dishes are Fijian dishes for me. Mm. So, but also through my career, and, you know, I, I lived, after living here, I lived in New York City for 20 years doing restaurants all over the U.S., and my kind of flicker of what, what, what's going on here is where is our food? Yes. Every, every yes. other food was there. So mm. that was what started me on this journey, actually. Let's get Fijian food. Let's get Pacific, Pacific food on the, the map. Different Pacific foods. Yes. And I, don't, I don't actually say Pacific food much anymore because I feel that's a geopolitical whitewash. Yes. It's kind it's of Manawatu restrictive a little food, bit. It's Samoan food. Mm. It's Fijian food. Okay. It's uh, yeah. Tongan food. Yeah. Pacific is not homogeneous. We're not all no, the same. No, no, no. And yeah. uh, that's, I think, some of the destination yeah. and yeah. the development um, mm. yeah. uh, conveniences have done that. Mm. But, you know, something that I, I, I still scratch my head about is um, how do we communicate to our viewers that if you eat low nutrition processed food mm. and you're young that it will affect you later mm. because young people simply yeah. feel immortal mm. but it will affect them later mm. and it's and the notion of convenience foods mm. is wrong convenient is the wrong word because yes. it's highly inconvenient That's right. yeah. when yeah. you are in your mid 40s mm. and you're having issues with your Maybe you've had obesity issues or mm. diabetic issues and you're not as productive. And as you it, should be. And it's not just the data. It's the pain and the mm. anguish and mm. the suffering. Yeah. It's yeah. emotional. It, and maybe it, the yeah. loss of productivity to all of those communities you could be contributing Everyone. to. Oh, yeah, mm. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, Robert, in this season, in the next season, rather, when you were filming, did you find anything different in the way you were behaving after um, all yeah, of the lessons of bit, season one? A little bit, because mm. I went to Los Angeles and we screened it to a uh, US distributor and they gave me feedback. I feel like for me, like I've done lots of TV, mm. but with this new product, I was feeling my way through who 
am you I were. in it? Were you questioning your your position in the whole um, Pacific celebration do. you were I doing? I always do, because mm. I don't want to be this guy that overwhelms the space. I, mm. I don't like being called a celebrity chef, because mm. I don't, that to me dominates a room, mm. and that's not my, that's not my, the way I work. Mm. So, but what the, the US <laughs> people said to me was, you know, we sit in these meetings with you and you're really hilarious, yes. and then you've got the camera on, you become the serious guy. So, that's right. you know, like, just yeah. be yourself. And so, of course, I was uh, uh, more in the season in the two, season. Mm. and all these guys stepped up as well. Right. well see? So I was like, we're well, not actually I, making a comedy show, but it's kind of that way. That's kind of the point <laughs> of revolution. But that well, is the Pacific way. Yes. We, 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 humor and mm. laughter are big for us, and that's mm. why I knew the show would work. Yeah. Mm. Because I knew, you know, when I first designed this idea, I had some of their television advisors say to us, oh, you'll never get Pacific people. They're not used to being on camera. And I was like, ah. Oh, don't you worry about that. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Let's, talk, let's talk some more about that. Um, we're going to leave you with a little bit of a sneak peek on what to expect on season two. Have a look at this. I'm Rachel. I'm Timo. And, and we, we are, are Aunt, Aunt and Nephi. We're going to be making Timo pumpkin soup. We're also making water salad. Bacalama vinaka, which is mango dessert. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that sneak peek of season two. The point of a revolution is to effect change that happens at multi-dimensions. And so in this segment, we're talking a little bit more with Dr. Chone and Robert Oliver from the Pacific Island Food Revolution team about some of the exciting changes that have happened as a result of the show. Some of it planned and some unplanned, Robert. Well, actually, pretty much all unplanned. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always a plus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, what's happened, um, you know, what we wanted to introduce was a narrative mm -hmm. and a, a, a place to begin. Mm -hmm. And What was the narrative? The narrative that our food is just awesome. Yeah. That was it's really as simple as that. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you call them superfoods, and Super that's food. a relatively new term that we're, all, we're kind of talking about a lot in the, you know, in the food yeah. space. What are superfoods and how, which of our foods is super? All of our foods are super. If you look at the nutritional... Uh, composition table of all our foods, 
they are in the first five categories. So what makes, what makes food super? Um, um, the, the, the micronutrient content of, of it. And uh, our foods are so diverse. Our nutrition sources are so diverse that it just takes care of all the micronutrients that everybody needs. So mm -hmm. it's, it's always a, a, you know, an, um, an irony that we have micronutrient deficiency mm. in... When we have all of these things available around us. Exactly. Uh, remember, okay. this is recent. Exactly. This is only yes. in the last yeah. 25 years. So you yeah. think that, that we've started to, uh, yeah. to not see how, how great our food choices yeah. yes. are? Well, uh, the, yes. the, the processed yeah. food industry didn't really exist. Yes. Mm. So it's, yeah, I don't it's remember not, ever not seeing Maggi noodles growing up. Yeah. yeah, it's not that hard. Once to it imagine. became a commodity, yeah. mm -hmm. that shift changed. Yeah. Okay. But then we can't go on mentioning the negatives and right. pointing a finger at bad foods. So right. doesn't matter. We yeah. wanna we wanna just say, hey, mm. here's our this food. This is a great option. Super. Okay. Yeah. So tell me some of the, the changes, some some of the positives that have happened as a result of season one. I think um, maybe well, the one you're most proud of. Well, I mean, in every country, there are fantastic initiatives em emerging mm. that are directly linked to Pacific Island food revolution. Mm. For example, everyone remembers the minister's wives yes. who were the Tongan finalists yes. last year, and they were so lovable. Everyone yes. absolutely loved them. So they went back to Tonga with this spirit of, mm. of being in the show, mm. and they thought, well, how are we going to keep this alive? And they've, they've formed an initiative called Kamana. And it is fundamentally a Meals on Wheels wow. for the elderly in the in Nukualofa through their church community. They realize that some elderly people, when, they, when they're living in town, uh -huh. the, the large extended family is not the same. And the, they're living with their kids, and the kids are at work all day, for example. So they're, there's no one to prepare food for them? It just, there's just some gaps there. Hmm. So, and it's not just food. It's the, it's, they get to be with the minister's wives, yes, yeah. which is pretty awesome. And, and, and they have a great time laughing <laughs> with yeah. them because yeah. they're so bubbly. Yeah. yeah, and then there are other things happening in yes. Tonga. In Fiji, um, Dr. Johnny has got yes. some initiative. Yeah. Sure I'll let him speak to that. Yeah, we'll <laughs> talk about that soon. In <laughs> um, mm. Vanuatu, Vitasi uh, Mackenzie Rowe, who's my co-host there, is mm. now leading an agritourism initiative, which mm. is really elevating cu cuisine at a national level. Wow. Mm. Um, and she's been on this path for 30 years, and she said to me, it's because of Pacific Island Food Revolution, people suddenly get it, and they're like, yes. oh, we can do this. Mm. And yes. there's a feeling of hope around that. Mm. Um, and in yes. Samoa, Dora Rossi, who's my co-host there, uh, now has her own TV show on TV3 Samoa. Oh, wow. Mm. Uh, weekly Healthy, healthy Samoan Lifestyles. Yes. She's doing a dinner oh, series in her restaurant. Yeah. Is, it, is it popular, the show, in Samoa? It just started two weeks ago. Oh, wonderful. I thought it was a pro. It's yes. going to be fantastic. Yes. Mm. Ah. Um, so, so this is what a revolution is. And, mm. and I'm touching on four things. There yes. are about 20. Wow. Things. I mean, just the general yeah. feedback mm. uh, I am getting in Fiji from all across levels of of, uh, you know, in, in Fiji, primary school students. Just for me, just to have primary school students recognize me from a food show yeah. means they are watching, they recognize mm. me, and they are liking what they are. They are and not watching. recognizing you for the amputation that you were known no, for in your previous life. No, and, yes. uh, and I love the fact that they are recognizing that there is superfood right. and it represents them, right. and I'm probably representing them too, yes. and that's. Okay. You know, and uh, not only people that... People can see, I suppose what you're saying is people can see the familiar in those TV yes. shows. Oh, that's our yeah. food. Oh, it's cool. That's our food. And it's in the contestants, too. I yes. mean, yeah. the, we yeah. cast the contestants mm. to represent demographics and communities, points of identity. Mm. People say, hey, that, she's just like my sister. Yes. Like, I could do that. Yes. And yeah, yeah so the, it's so the I've points. I've got taxi drivers who are trying yeah, to I tell me, too. share with me their grandmother's <laughs> their recipe. Recipes. And they are telling me, come home, come home. I want to show you this <laughs> recipe. And I would yeah. love mm. to, but... You know, but it's it's the mm. general feedback from everyone, and it's it's encouraging. And it's what you had hoped for. Yes, because mm. health will sort itself out. Okay. Yeah. Let's well, just let's let's talk about uh, another part to health that that yeah. that I suppose you're known for before yeah. Yeah. this show, yeah. but one that 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 you 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 want to do more work in and around. Yes. Um, uh, how does a glamorous food show? teach us to live better with some of the lifestyle diseases that, that we now have to contend with? All the lifestyle diseases share common factors. 
one of it is nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so we sort out nutrition, we sort out one quarter of the issues. And if you deal with cuisine, it's about slow food and you are dealing with stress by just reducing the pace of life and you are taking time enjoying cooking. Mm. You know, you are serving good food to the family. It takes out, and so the impacts that sorting out nutrition alone does to the other factors, which is uh, just four, uh, it's, it's huge. Mm. And so it trickles down to reach the, the very core factors that end up in NCDs. And so... Uh, Are you going to be looking at um, initiatives or measures post-season two that look at how this food revolution can impact on better yes, health? Yes, I, I, I uh, am working with, with, uh, with a team, uh, of course, in, in trying to uh, create a specific program because I'm, my passion, uh, my other passion is about uh, trying to do something about diabetic amputations. Yes. And so we are, we are looking at uh, coupling, uh, having in parallel a cooking mm. show with a screening program okay. to just try and reduce okay. our diabetic amputation levels because that's just uh, costing us a lot uh, as a country. Yeah? Okay, well, we should be talking about that. Uh, again, but right. I, I think that we may have run out of time, which is a pity. This conversation about food is taking us everywhere. But gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks I for cannot us. wait to see all, all the work that, that you'll I'm have up next. Hello. But I understand that it's been an uphill battle getting all of this work done, and you um, wouldn't have been able to had not been for the generosity of some people. Uh, you know, I, it has. I wouldn't say an uphill battle, it's just it was, anything new has to be understood before it's mm -hmm. supported, but the New Zealand and Australian governments yeah. have, have understood it quickly. Oh, from the get-go. And so they wanted innovation in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the health space, yeah. and they've been just terrific supporters of mm -hmm. this project. Mm -hmm. So. Well, we have them, them to thank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the New Zealand and the Australian government and, of course, yeah. the people of, of the two countries. Uh, gentlemen, thank you again. Okay. We will talk again. No worries. Okay. So much that food is connected to in other areas of our lives. Remember, Pacific Island Food Revolution screens Thursday night, straight after Simpson at 8. Stay tuned for more information about Season 2. You are watching Simpson at 8. Good night.